this is what I think happened. And this is my final version of what I believe has happened after spending five days out in this area, as well as another four, five, maybe six days, I can't remember what I spent searching different areas again. I've put everything through my head, decided all the theories done that shot, and came up with what I think is working. So, his friends pick him up from Yorkshire, they drive up, they uh, stop at Loch Dockard for the first night, uh, first day, Saturday afternoon, whatever, and pitch all together there by that tree, right? There you go. Because that's the tree stump and that's the pitch site. Obviously the tree's behind the pitch site, but it doesn't look at it from it from here. Next morning they wake up, they have no weather forecast, they don't know bad weather's on the way. It's either changed or they forget to check. I don't know what's happened. But anyway, they set off, all three, for 90 minutes along that awful path going up and up and up and down to Glen Kinglass. Their main aim is to get to Glen Etiv, Amadi Bay, that area, and pitch around there together. Now, I believe, this is my version, Neil says, oh, I'm not feeling it. It's not, he's not ill or anything. He's just saying, I'm not feeling it. I, I'm, I'm tired or I, I, I think I'll turn back and go back to Loch Dachard, right? Now he says to them, go ahead, go ahead. Because I'm not fine and he's fine. Because he's, I think, because it, what doesn't explain it is, why would you hike another 90 minutes back? You know, if you're feeling fatigued, tired or whatever, you'd pitch at Glen Kinglass and say, I'll catch you up tomorrow. If you're in no rush tomorrow, I'll catch you up. Oh, it won't take me long to, you know, do the last few miles. I'll see you tomorrow. He didn't say that. He said, you go ahead, I'll go back to Loch Dachard. Right, that's a giveaway for a start. So he goes back to Loch Dachard. Now, what was he gonna do? They weren't gonna come back to pick him up until Thursday, which is three days later. This is the Monday when he's, he's, he's just, uh, the Sunday, sorry, when he's decided to turn round. So he's, the picture is Saturday, I'll go and clarify that. The picture is Saturday, Sunday morning, set off. 90, 90 minutes in, he's decided to come back, right? So that's another 90 minutes back. So that's three hours. So whatever time they set off, let's say they set off at 10. Three hours from 10, it's one o'clock. That would give you kind of the time when someone saw him about two o'clock-ish, head out the tent. So he was probably just set up the tent, pitched it, probably heard someone properly set out, or he's doing things, you know what I mean? Now, so that's Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Now the point is, that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's four days they're going to come back. What was he going to do for four days? He was not going to sit at the lock for four days, just twiddling his fingers. He didn't decide to say, oh, I'll catch you up and go back down. He said, I'll wait for you to come pick me up. So what was he going to do? I think Neil didn't tell everyone, but I think Neil thought he was going to spend three or four days here just enjoying himself. Just do like we all do, you know what I mean? Probably one day walk around the lock, another day maybe look over that way, another day walk up the stalker's track, which he'd seen, and go and have a look at the valleys, not go into them, not go up, no Munro's, not go no climbing, he's not stupid, just go for a walk, right? And probably another day, go that way, maybe. He's already been that way, but you don't know what he's gonna do, you know what I mean? So he had something planned in his head because there was no way he's gonna say to them, go ahead, I'll go back to Loch Dark and I'll sit there twiddling my fingers for four days. That wasn't gonna happen, right? Now what I think has happened, he's, he's had these plans to kind of go in these areas, right? So that for, he set up his tent Sunday afternoon. Someone's seen him Sunday afternoon. He's gone to sleep, he's woke up. He's had a meal, he's had a cup of tea. He's feeling much better, rested. And it, you know, the weather it hasn't turned yet. And he's thinking to himself, I've got all this time now. I've, I've scanned down the stalker's path that he's passed. Why, is, why this stalker's path? He's got three options without tracking photos. He can go that way towards that plantation where we pitched the first time. He can go along the track that way where he spent three hours 
during the day going, which I don't see him wanting to do, sorry my fingers in the way, or he can spend about 40 minutes, he don't know it's going to be 40 minutes, but some 40 minutes down here, down the track. So what he's decided to do, he wants to, he's been staring at these for the oh, last two, three days, and uh, he said to himself, I just want to have an amble down, I plan to, I plan to hike up there, but I'm only going to follow the stalker's path down, so I won't need trekking poles, because he can't go around the lock, he's going to need trekking poles. You can't go in the woods or anything like that, it's too clumsy. And once you're in the woods, you need trekking files. You can't go to the car to pick any other gear up because once he's passed out the plantation where we pitched first time, he's going to need trekking files. It's been dry this year, but normally it's boggy, messy, marshy. This is the first time I've ever known it to be so dry and easy to walk on. But you can guarantee it wasn't like that last time he came, when, when he was here, sorry. Um, so what he's done after having a couple hours kip having his meal drinking some of his tea and he's gone oh time's getting on if i'm gonna go for evening stroll, i might as well go now and he's put his tea down he hasn't taken trekking poles he hasn't taken his waterproofs but nice and brightly colored because there's no rain it's not no sign of rain at that time so what he's done he's set off and he's left up for campsite by that tree and he's walked five minutes up this track so he's got to the stalker's track where it joins the, the, the main track. Then he's gone six minutes down this. And he's crossed this because it isn't flooded. There's no water, hardly any water. There's more water than it is today, but this still isn't bad. He's past Rebel where Rebel's standing, followed the track all the way around. And remember I timed it? It took me 29 minutes when I was stopping, 21 minutes when I was taking my time reason it took me longer when I was stopping because I was filming and talking to you but I said give him 30 minutes so it's taken him 30 minutes from my campsite round to where the ruins are that's all it's taken him right now when you're going that way as I said you skirt a little bit of bend in the river and then you pick up the trail across the river and it's seeable it's very easy to see but when you're coming back I watched the group today, the Duke of Edinburgh, they totally missed it. And you can see the trails in the grass here. And they cut across the river here to get across. And luckily it's so low, they could do it. I did the same when I followed Mike, when he shot off in front of me, on, when he was finishing. And I, I doubled back and went, whoa, 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 I'm going the wrong way. Me and Mike did it on the first day of the last, uh, the last day of the first section when we came up on the searches, if you remember, a couple of weeks back, we missed that river, got some way down here, went, whoa, we had to go back. Now that's in broad daylight, with lovely sunshine, good weather. So it's very missable. Three set times it's been missed that I know of, you know what I mean, when we've been doing it. And I'm, you know, I'm not... I know Mike is experienced, I'm experienced, I'm sure that Duke of Edinburgh experience, but it's very easy to miss. What happens, you come across a river, and you don't realise you've got a skirt around like that mound and then you pick the track up again. Going that way is easy to do, but coming back it's hard. Now as I say, he's gone up there, he's ambled, he's had a look, and the weather's closing in, it's getting dusk, the weather's closing in, so he's come back. And as he's come back round here, he's missed. Stalk. he's crossed the river and he's come over here and he's probably got all the way over here and he's gone uh oh where's the track gone now this river will be higher he's gone oh no i made a mistake so being intelligent because i know he's done it in the past he has been you know very clever when he's got lost before he has backtracked and kind of gone down and all this he's backtracked back there but by then it's getting dark and guess what? He hasn't got his head torch, it's in the tent. He hasn't got his hiking poles, they're in the tent. He hasn't got his waterproofs and the rain's coming. So now he really is getting confused because now he can't see hardly the stalker's track. When he gets back over the river, he's, he's struggling to see the stalker's track where he's been. And I think one or two things he's done, he's either gone round in circles, don't forget it's getting dark, he's got no torch. You try walking this land, with no torch and I know it doesn't get dark dark at this time of year but the thing is 
you know, it's dark enough that you can't find the stalker's track. You'll be ambling about, especially as you get more and more panicky. Or he's gone this way and done exactly the same, trying to find tracks and paths. What we need is a drone scanning these areas there and these areas here, all the way along the back of the lock, because there's so many holes. But that's my version, and that's what's happened. The weather's got worse, he's got lost. He's, he could have been around there, he could go around in circles for hours if, you, if it's dark and the weather's closed in. Don't forget, if the weather's closing in, it's darker than tonight and the last few nights I've had. It, you know, it's literally getting dark. Whereas normally, if the weather was like this, you'd probably be able to see to 11 o'clock at night. And that's what I think has happened. I think he's in this section, or he's in that section all around the back there. That's what I've narrowed it down to. That's my version. People say, well, he went back to the car. He needs trekking poles to get the, once you get past that bridge, you need trekking poles. It, I mean, it, it, Mike was using trekking poles to get back. I was using trekking poles. When I had the barra, obviously, I was taking my time and I was struggling, but don't forget, we're in, we've had like three weeks of drought weather, you know what I mean? So everything's gone hard and crispy. But uh, when I was coming up, I used trekking poles. He wouldn't have gone up that way, as I say, he just spent three hours going up there that day. And to go much further than the bridge, as I say, you need trekking poles to amber around the bridge. There isn't many places you can go. Clashgore Farm, in the plantation you can't get in there it's it's dense you'd be a fool to try and walk through that you know what i mean you'd be on your hands and knees up the gorge i went up there as far as you can and then you hit a, sh a waterfall that's like that so you can't get up there and he's definitely not done no munro because again you need trekking poles even to get up that gorge you need trekking poles because there's a lot of holes hence i think he's in this section or this section and I know we've covered a lot of this section and I've covered a lot of that section, but trust me, there's so many holes and so many ditches, so many boulders. I was finding like, uh, you saw a cave I found one near some trees. Um, honestly, it's just a maze. You, you, you could be walking past them within 10 feet and not see them. So that's why I believe what's happened. So, that's 15 minutes I've discussed. <laughs> Hope I haven't bored you, but we're going back. Uh, well, I'm going to try and find somewhere else to pitch tomorrow. If not, I will be going back tomorrow because I've covered everything I can by, you know, by, uh, with us. We need a drone, something that can hover out and cover more land really quick and low down. Um, and the other, there's always the final alternative isn't there for some reason he fell in the water or got washed away down a river and he's either in the lock or been flushed down to Loch Tula I'd like to not believe that because the police teams and all that and divers and people I'm sure would have picked him up by now so I think he's still lying in these areas I don't think he's gone down Munro I don't think he's gone in the valleys I think he was tempted because just like me since I saw the valleys, it draws you. I think he planned in future to hike up a little way like I did the last few days. Just go and have a look at her. Nothing crazy. So that's my assumptions. That's my final conclusions. I'll probably be proved totally wrong. <laughs> but we have to have our own views. And I'm not saying anyone else's views are wrong. I'm just giving my views. I'm not trying to clash with anyone or anything like that because I'm sure others will have their own views. But mine, I can pick peace. You know what I mean? I've done dry runs and everything to test it. So it can be done. And you do not need trekking poles down that stalker's path. Right. <laughs> hopefully I haven't bored you. But hopefully I'll make sense to those that are interested in the subject. Those are going to do future shirt searches and uh, the family. I hope I haven't, you know, caused any undue distress talking about this, but I'm sure they would like some answers and I'm giving them my conclusions and my assumptions and what I believe might have happened. So I hope that helps, you know what I mean? And if this area is covered with drones, 
or a drone at least and this area is covered with drone and the back around the back there then and nothing's found then i've been proven wrong yeah you know i mean we'll have to see if no one can get up with a drone then i'll have to purchase one and i'll bring one up by september -ish. somewhere around there next time i'll probably be up here so unless he's found hopefully he's found by then it's been over a year now let's just hope if he is deep in the in the lock, we might never ever get any answers, sadly. Unless some divers are gonna, gonna go in. Right, back to my dogs. Did you see, I was, as I was chatting to you, Rebel was coming to the edge of the grass and waiting for me. It's amazing, isn't it? I always think he's the clown, but he's the most loyal out of the three. I mean, Stella used to, would be like that, but now Stella's old, she just wants to rest. Right. That's it for now. I'm going to feed the dogs and settle down for the night in a bit. Bye for now.